<laughs> big hit represent. Big hit. Bag dead. Uh, do you yes. remember that one time that um, Aaron was covering that Kendrick song? Yes, yeah. He did uh, Did BTS ever did a uh, diss track? Yes. Well, there was there was rap beef. There was. There was there was like a podcast about like hip hop and they diss BTS. And then um, in one of their like ciphers or something, RM was like, fuck you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty fire. Just Pretty got fire. some car beef out there. Didn't they play a perfect fifth in the car? I think that's one horn. I don't know. Maybe. But I'd like to think that it was two cars honking at each other. Damn. Also, which goofy yeah. ass car out there is playing a fucking perfect fifth in a hole? I think they do. Like, you know, more expensive cars, they have two horns to play your fifths or your... Sorry, do you reckon it's the Tesla then? The Teslas have one speaker. They have the, um, they have a loud ass speaker for custom horn sound. Yeah, but I don't know what they would use, man. I like to think that that was a perf- that was a might be, but I'm pretty melody. sure horns are you know designed at least the cars with two horns. They're designed to make some sort of harmonic noise well, or dissonant but, noise but that's not dissonant a perfect fifth is the opposite of dissonant so like people are going to tune up, into that uh, not... like Volvo horn yeah. it'll, it'll come up with something yes BTS don't do ciphers no more yeah because they're that. in the military <laughs> that's going to so be a bit they can hard, diss the right? Korean military yeah. they be like fuck my prime minister even though they gave me that one award and they uh, you know we're 2% of the economy and to like the ambassadors of South Korea or yeah. something. Can a knight be unknighted? Ask uh, who's a knight? Paul McCartney. Chris Dolan. David Ad. Did he get knighted? Yes. Then Chrissy got it. I think it was Chris. No, that was recent. I guess uh, Charles really likes his films. A queen Lizzie. Oh, I, I was confused if you, but who's, I was going to who the fuck is Charles? Charles the, the king. Not Charles the woo. King Charles. Oh, wait, are we recording? Yes, now right, we fine. are recording. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another pleasantly uh, recorded episode of the Unholy Trinity podcast. It's a bit warm in here, isn't it? It is a bit, a bit warm, warm, I think. Yeah, yeah it's been uh, it's been uh, 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 warmed by here. the sun, you know. I mean, it's cold outside. It's fucking nineteen degrees on the fourth. Sun's fucking radiator. Well, I hope it's not too warm because we're gonna stay here for a bit. Everything recorded previously. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, uh, paywall that paywall that shit. What the paywall the for absolutely nothing. Uh, BTS conversation. Yeah. How's it? Poppin'. I just want to jump into the beef I just like straight up. Right. Can, yeah, we, can we do that? All right. Are way. you aware of the beef, Mr. Sunman? No. I know of it. The beef of the century, really. It, it kind of... Is it like the last hundred years or just like this uh, 21st century? The, the 21st century. Because I feel like, like the Biggie Tupac was kind of yeah, pretty was prominent. The 20th yeah, in the 20th century. Yeah, in the 20th century, for real. Yeah. So far, I guess the beef of the century. Or well, what about like Jake Paul, Logan Paul? That was pretty. That was pretty fire back in the day. But were they versing each other, bro? Yeah. I don't even remember. Yeah, it's, 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 the rice so gum was involved, and so yeah. No, nah, whatever yeah. I was saying. He did some um, rice gum shit. I guess it is the beef of the century. I can't really think of any other ones. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, well, I guess Drake versus Pusha. Drake for. Oh, to be, yeah, to be fair, the Pusha T thing was huge because now Drake's like, yeah, I've got a son. That that's, yeah. You wouldn't even know that Drake has a that son if it wasn't a new, for Pusha. Uh, president for so, rap, rap beefs, you yeah. know, revealing your, uh, what do you call it, bastard sons. I mean, I guess that's the thing with this one, right? This current rap beef, it's like, no, no one's really revealing anything that it has substantial evidence here. Yeah. But the claims, the speculation is, is quite wild. Let's, let's break it down a little bit by taking it back, all right? Take it back. Yeah. Now, start. if you remember earlier, I, I believe the beef style, maybe there's, the, Kendrick and Drake do have, like, history in general, but, like, they have I feel like whatever the their past. feelings were about each other, the actual beef started, I think, with Metro Boomin dropping a record with Mr. Future. And that yeah. record 
was called We Don't Trust You, I Believe. And then he made a follow-up called We Still Don't Trust You, and apparently that was not good. But anyway, Mm -hmm. this first one had a track called Like That, and that featured Kendrick Lamar. And in, in the track, he says, Fuck the big three. It's just it's big, big me. me. And some other stuff as well, throwing shots but, at J. Know, Cole. He whatever. also said he hates the sneak distance. So apparently there's some sneak distance somewhere in some Drake tracks. In, uh, that. I've heard that it's potentially, is it like to do with the song First Person Shooter with Drake and J. Cole? Yeah. Yeah. That's why. But I think it's more like, I think it's the same sort of level of uh, Disney where it's just like, I'm the best, you know? It's not like a direct, mm. like, you're the worst sort of thing. But then Kendrick kind of made it a bit more like, a little bit more like you're the worst as well as I'm the best. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, that song's about me. Yeah. Um, so then Drake put out a song. This was like a few, maybe weeks Week. later, Drake put out the song Push Ups. Yeah. And it's kind of a, like, let's be real. It was kind of a banger. Like, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I kind of enjoyed it. I thought it was I pretty... I only listened to it, like, once, and I forgot. It wasn't time. very deep. It was kind of... It was a little bit childish. It was just like, haha, you're short. Yeah, that's the And song uh, like, Taylor made you famous, right? Yeah. That was part of it. And then he followed it up with a <laughs> song called Taylor Made, which featured AI Tupac and AI Snoop Dogg rapping on it, dissing Kendrick. Which is like mind games because those are like his idols, like Kendrick's idols, right? Yeah, but also fucked up because Tupac dead and Snoop Dogg is still there. Yeah. So then the Tupac estate like Put made Drake to take that. down the track. But Drake speculates that it was Kendrick that did that. And he brings that up in a later song. Mm, he's I he's saying matters. that oh, Kendrick told the estate to take yeah. it down. And then I, I watched the Instagram of Snoop Dogg just be like, what the fuck is this? And then he just stopped the life. <laughs> just deep shit. Deep, just deep fake shit. He's yeah. doing one of his classy like Twitch streams, like where he plays yeah. his video games and then he like he rages didn't the stream me. life. He, he, he stopped nah, the stream. he just stopped the stream. He, 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 he yeah. understands how to stop no, streams. So. Very cool. Um, then, weeks, maybe like a couple weeks later, I think, Kendrick drops Euphoria. And people were mm. like, people leading up to it, people were like, bro, what's taking Kendrick so long to respond? That's why Drake made Taylor made to like, you know. Yeah, yeah. To further on, which yeah. something Kendrick will later reflect. But we'll get to that. He drops Euphoria. It is like a roughly oh, sorry, Six going back minutes. a little bit, there's other like stupid ass little songs yeah, in Rick between Ross. from like Rick Ross did a diss track, J. Cole did a diss track. I guess J. Cole would have been relevant if he didn't go straight up afterwards take the track down and say, I'm sorry, I was being immature. He made like a seven minute long diss track on Kendrick. We are like, all children and I'm being a child. Which is, yeah, it's fair. People, uh, when he did that, were going, oh, you're just a coward, mate. But now everyone's like, respectful, that. mate. You don't want to get involved in this drama. Because it's gone to the point where, you know, a lot of allegations are thrown, being thrown around here. Yeah. So a smart part of Mr. Cole... Yeah, like he just chilling, early, bro. You know, he's pulling out. He pulled out early. Yeah, he got that. He got that future seeing eyes. Yeah. So now we got. We're on the euphoria here. That's where Kendrick dropped. dropped I guess his first big bomb. Not a big bomb. Well, it's almost it a didn't teaser. really. It's I think teaser. it was about the same as kind of push up stories. Like yeah, just insulting him, but nothing. He says I like he. He kind of goes like. This is the era of the, we're still keeping it friendly, right? This is like beef, but like this could be resolved if you apologize sort of vibe. And he's like, I will drop stuff though. I know stuff about you and it will come out. Yeah, I think uh, the line he, he said was, uh, don't tell no lies about me. And I don't tell no truths about, about you. you. Oh, see, that's a good cool Straight one. up, straight up. Um, yeah, I mean... Both push-ups and euphoria, I feel like, were um, kind of similar substance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kendrick, you know, but he got that poetry vibes, whereas Drake kind of just goes, you're short, you know. Drake. He just do the doozy thing. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a certified lover boy. Yeah. So, but yeah, both songs didn't really add anything that we don't already know to the narratives about yeah. each other. But then, Drake drops Family Matters. Shit. 
That's that where is, the, the, the allegations start. Yeah, so like there. that has allegations, like crazy ass allegations of like, oh, your kid's not even yours. It's like your business partner slash friends' kid. Um, you're fucking, um, you beat your wife. Um, uh, and uh, accuses, oh, so with the with the Euphoria track of Futsal that Kendrick's basically going, um, you suck. You suck I and you're you. not black enough. That was like one of the big points of yeah, that. And so with family matters anymore, and I yeah, so with family matters. Uh, Drake is doing the opposite. It's calling Kendrick racist. So it's like a little bit of a double Drake standard type is thing. A half African Canadian man. Yeah, from Toronto. Do you know that? That was to you. That was to you, I believe. I know he's yeah. from Toronto. Yeah. yeah. They speak with funny accents. They do, and uh, Kendrick impersonates that on uh, which one is this Crody thing? Oh, yeah, it was on the bloody uh, Euphoria. Euphoria. Euphoria, yeah. Um, Drake is Drake kind of the biggest. Person? He is kind of well, the number one artist on uh, the streamings, isn't he? Well, in terms of hip hop, yeah, yeah. Um, he's not bigger than Ed Sheeran, right? No one no, would be bigger no, than Ed Sheeran. No, no, no. Actually, Ed Sheeran's the biggest hip hop artist, right? It's true, <laughs> true. True. I wonder if he's going to weigh in on this. Yeah, well, what if Ed Sheeran dropped the diss track, bro? I mean, Kendrick's whole deal is like... Well, Drake's whole deal is I'm more successful because I like got more streams, money, all of that. Kendrick's more like I'm affecting the culture more. I am the real I'm a better father than guy. you. That's a big thing as well. So, anyway... With family matters, he kind of, um, Drake's like going, oh, your fam, you, you're a hypocrite, you're uh, with the racism, and, um, you're not the nice guy everyone thinks you are, and you beat your wife. And your kid's yes. probably not yours. Which is like big, big accusations, mate. No mm. substance to back it up. And I, f- I believe some of it is derived just from him listening to Mr. Mr. Morale album. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny because in Euphoria, he goes, um, Kendrick's like, I can predict your angles or something, um, manipulating on the family front because you heard Mr. Morale, which I believe is him predicting that Drake's just going to use Mr. Morale against him, right? Yeah. If that's my interpretation, at least. So I'm like, that's kind of interesting that Kendrick already kind of knew that or whatever. It was all planned. Well, there is some... Uh, We'll get into that actually, because there's some more theories and etc. It's always there's always going to be the, the, the it's plan B. Yeah. From... But I feel like the so allegations against Kendrick though are way too big to like domestic violence allegations. That's a bit too much for like just a way to sell more records or whatever. You know what I mean? This is going deep on I both feel like sides. That's pretty, so yeah. It's, you know, it's, but it's we haven't about... got to the big Drake stuff yet because. After family, ma- uh, Drake's also dropped this other thing called like the something burial interlude or whatever, which is a reference I, to. I don't know about that. Uh, he did like a remake of a Kendrick interlude on one of Drake's early albums. Yeah. And it was a teaser for this song, for the Family Matters song. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of layers to this thing. Oh, funny thing about Family yeah. Matters, he crushed the. Uh, he good crushed kid the Good Kid Mad City, City van. Yeah. And I saw, heard a joke. Or like, oh, Drake could have used that van to carry all his kids it's in, but no. Yeah, yeah. I also and... heard that joke. I guess also the significance significance of that is that on the album Good Kid, Mad City, Drake had a feature on that album because kind of Kendrick's first big performance or whatever was at as the opener for Drake tour, mm. and then he had a feature. And it was like they were friends back then. They were buddies. But maybe oh, Kendrick hated friends. him all along. Who knows? It sounds like Kendrick <laughs> absolutely despises this man. But anyway, so then where am I up to? Family Venice drops, and then immediately 30 minutes later, Kendrick drops a diss track. Um, so he had it ready to go. It was Meet the Grahams. Actually, wait, sorry. Prior to him dropping uh, fucking Family Matters, Kendrick put out a it little. Six. Six, yeah, six one six in LA, which is kind of the same effect that Taylor made had is just like a little taunt, mm. try to get them to drop earlier sort of vibe. But it's also, I think the theory was is that it's part of the Meet the Grahams track, but it's just been cut. Yeah, yeah, because according to leaks, it was but it was originally at one full fourteen minute song or something, right, right, and then they just cut that little part. 
Anyway, it doesn't really. There's no real bombshells in that one. I don't think it's just like. It's just more of I hate just you. more of I hate you. So then, okay. Um, where me. was fuck it? Where are we up to? Mid the graves drops, and it's this fucking interesting song where he kind of goes through Drake's family, addressing each family member, and then like then he starts off yes. going like to his son. He's like, "I'm sorry, your father's like a piece of shit. I could be a better role model to, to him than you." And he's like teaching him all these lessons. And this go, like, your dad's a pedophile. Yeah, this is like album level Kendrick, right? Yeah, now. like it's really it's fucking like, good. Damn. Yeah. This song's something else. It hits different, man. It does, it does. It's spooky. Yeah. It yeah, does right? have very spooky vibes with the, some of the production elements, mm-hmm. the way he does some vocal stuff towards the end. It's like, it's like the ghost spooky. thing. Yeah, that's cool. That's so fucking cool. But it's like such an interesting, because it's not even like, like it's a diss, but it's also just like, it's a story. It's a story. It's, it's a, a real story. story. And he goes through, like, um, uh, Drake's baby mama. He's like, bro, I'm sorry that Drake be treating you like shit and mm-hmm. not, like, acknowledging you much and all of that. And also Drake's a pedophile. This is a big important part. Drake's okay. a pedophile. A lot of that. Um, he introduces the whole family. The, his mother. Yeah. His father. father. His son. His baby and mama. Then... And then... Or second secret. He says, dear baby girl, I'm sorry your father ain't in your world. Insinuating Drake has a daughter, a secret daughter. She. Not impressed, bro. Not impressed. Which, to be fair, I don't think that's as damning as the domestic violence allegations on Drake's part. I think having a secret daughter is like, yeah. It's just like, oh, another one? Yeah. God, yeah. And then Kendrick will later expand and say there's probably like a bunch more out there or whatever. Mm. But um, so yeah, big claims that he has an 11 year old daughter, at least 11 oh, and then, or whatever. Yeah, pedo claims and also like his his o- OVO is all a pedo ring. Yeah, that's that's the OVO is his, uh, his yeah, posse. OVO the label of uh, Trey, saying that it's like a pedophile ring, which is like pretty. Interest, like th- this is the time for it, right? We got we just had a fucking P D D with that whole thing, piece. and he's basically insinu- I think he did do a P D D reference on Euphoria, so mm. like I think there's like basically saying they're the same level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting about this era of this is like you have to bring something up. You have to bring some uh, dirt, some info. Yeah, because Pusha T, I feel like literally changed the game. Because before that, if you think about yeah. Biggie, Tupac beef, it's it's just jab shit like i'm gonna kill you but literally and then pay you, but then they yeah. will die yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so like oh you're fat <laughs> oh like yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's, it's uh i guess back in the day it was but i'm gonna kill you and you actually die yeah this time it's like oh you're pedo bro yeah but maybe real but it's just maybe a theory just a theory a yeah. game theory yeah so yeah meet the grahams cool track um, some allegations coming up, a secret daughter, pedophile ring. That's pretty big, I feel. Um, also, bag of light at the end where he says, um, fuck a rap battle, this a lifelong a battle with yourself to drink. Which is mm. like, she, that's, oh, yeah, that's pretty like, deep. Oh, you, you have a lot of problems, man. You uh, addict, you gamble, some other shit, you suck. And, <laughs> and I, I think you should die. He said oh that. yeah, he straight says, I think you should die at one point. So you're getting okay. pretty serious. But maybe it's stemming for some childhood trauma, according to Drake in a later song, but mm. we'll get to that, shall we, wait, right? So okay. then, one day later, not probably not even for full 24 hours later, Kendrick, Kendrick drops, drops another, again! Another one. Uh, what was the song called? Not Like Us. Not Like Us. And it's like, it's so, like I feel like in terms of the one that has the most like dance ability, the most... It's reaffirming fun, like, what he said on... Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, lyrics aside, I'm mm-hmm. just saying. I feel like it's the most not like it's the most fu- like groovy it's, song, bro. It's the banger one. It's the banger. It's the you banger. You know, it's it's to address the complaints of the Drake glazers, as they call them on the net. That all oh, all Kendrick's, you can't even like oh dance to them and shit. It's, it's you know it's unlistenable. You have to really dig for the meaning in the lyrics, bro. Who has time for that? Mother, this the one. If you don't yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, if you yeah. don't like meet the Grams, listen to this one. I think that was the entire yeah. purpose of yeah. doing that, like that, like that. Yeah. Um, I like it like that. But yeah, so meet the Grams. I'm gonna like lyrically, it's just like it's 
it's good, but it's like a lot of the same stuff he same said point. expanded. Except he kind of doesn't talk about the daughter angle. Yeah. Which Drake has a theory about that in his response. But um, he, did post he goes Instagram super hard like, into the OVO pedophile ring. Yeah. And like, so the he, he album, yeah, the album cover or like, what would, is it? A, it's not an album, but like the cover, the cover art or whatever is Drake's house with like pedophile markers on it. Like the Google <clears throat> maps and then the pedophile markers. From the pedophile registry yeah. or, something. or something, but it's yeah. kind of funny. Um, it includes banger lines like certified lover boy, certified <laughs> pedophile, and um, what was the the striker chord? He trying to strike a chord. It's probably a minor. That's kind of that's D O double G level bars. Yeah, <gasps> that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, but yeah, enjoyable track, but doesn't really add anything that new to the beef. And nor does it like respond to family matters in a way to Yay. deflect the allegation. But I think but he also on in one of his tracks he mentions that he's got like ten more coming or something. Yeah, in, in uh, was it yeah not like us? Yeah, he was like yeah. I got one, two, three, four, oh. like yeah. counting the eight, but now he counted the four, he counted the five, and he said plus five. Yeah, that's the limit of his yeah. counting. He just goes yeah, up to five. He gets uh five. Yeah, plus five. So more and more Kendrick cracks come in. I'm, I'm hopefully another one will come in half an hour. Yeah, while well, we're on the phone. This is the new rate hurt. of this. Well, we should have like notifications on or back, something yeah. for his YouTube channel. This is this is a new era, man. This yeah. tracks come in in 24 hour cycles. Well, you the thing is, that. like, that that's kind of the detriment, right? Though also because it's like you won't really have mm. any new information. It's only yeah. be stuff you already know. Which is why Kendrick's responses to family matters aren't really responding to family matters. It's coincidentally about family. Well, it's it's not necessarily coincidentally about family matters because he alleges <clears throat> that he has a mole within OVO um, that's feeding him information. Yeah. So, like, he probably knew that what family matters was about prior to it. Mm -hmm. So, interesting enough, still, I think he doesn't really address any of the allegations, which is like... Yes. Yeah. True, true. But, you know, we might get a address on that because in this new Drake track, he doubles down. Yeah. For real. So then Drake, this morning, drops The Heart Part 6, which is a, like a reference to Kendrick's, like... The Heart Series. The Heart Series. So he's taking the, par he's taking the mantle of Part 6. Which is interesting because that means, like, you know, can Kendrick do another Part 6? If Drake already took a part six. I don't know. It's like yeah. if I file for the PS6, where can Sony yeah. make a PS6? Uh, uh, uh. True, true. Well, they actually file for patents in advance. But like, I guess in terms of this, mm. I don't think Kendrick... And usually Kendrick them. does the heart before he drops an album. Yeah. So it's like, and Drake in this song is like, oh, you're just doing this because you, uh, you're prepping for an album, aren't you? Yeah. That. Which actually was my theory going mm. into this, to be honest, at the start. I was like, maybe this is prepping for an album. Nice. The album is just going to be Drake this track. Yeah, it was like just an EP about Drake. <laughs> Ten songs about Drake. I reckon, yeah. Also, I think this, yeah. um, well, the symbolism of the heart as well in this song is because Dave Free, the business partner such friend of Kendrick, who is allegedly the father of Kendrick's child, um, he keeps posting hearts under pictures of Kendrick's children or something. So people... Maybe he just likes kids. Whoa, whoa, allegations, yeah, allegations here. But that's what, so that's what Drake was alleging in this new yeah. song. Um, he basically goes, oh, uh, we, fe we fed you the information about the daughter so we could like get you to trip up. Basically, it was fake news. It was fake say. news so that you don't do your research and you just run with anything. It makes Kendrick look like desperate for yeah. a bombshell, you know? So he's saying the mole's a double H. Yeah. Which Oops, could be true, could not yeah. be true. Nothing's really substantiated yet. Um, and then he basically goes, I ain't a pedophile. I the stuff with Millie Bobby Brown, nah, 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 that wasn't me. He and he no, directly no. says Millie Bobby Brown in the song. Like, he knows, he knows. He doesn't address that funny video though. You know the one with the like kiss of the seventeen-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, "I won't look twice at a underage 
girl, woman. Yeah. Ain't no Millie Bobby Browns. Also, you beat your wife. Yeah. When are you going to address that? Which is still valid. Why have you? He, yeah. Why has he addressed that? Is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. addressed that. True. There's some damning allegations. I feel like this new one was the least catchiest of the Drake songs there. I feel like... Uh, but I think it's stronger, you know, bar for bar than the previous one. I don't know. I don't know. I feel... He had some... He had some... Because there's a lot of I there. didn't yeah. do the things you're saying it. I did. Yeah. And then repeating the allegations from the previous thing. He did the funny uh, B... B sharp... B better line. I can't even remember. It was okay. Like... Uh, the ghost Drake's Ghost Rider's pen game has been pretty strong thus yes. far, right? Oh, yeah, like, that's another funny thing. Drake is allegedly, or well, I guess it's already half confirmed, he has a lot of ghost writers. Well, Drake alleges that Kendrick, yeah. uh, Kendrick's best songs are written by Baby Keem, though. Because so. oh, Baby yeah, Keem has so credits on like, the right, yeah. 2015 Baby Keem is playing Minecraft at YouTube. <laughs> so, like, okay. Yeah, There's very easy. Songs. That's what we would do when we were probably yeah. back in the, those days. We were making so when, funny when he stuff. dropped T-Pad, arguably one of the best, a lot of his best songs are in there. Baby Keem wrote that. Yeah. And like the thing with like N95 or whatever, yeah, Keem does like ad libs, so it's probably yeah. like he's just credited for ad lib, you know? Yeah, you know. True. Baby Keem. But that is the up-to-date things so far unless Kendrick yeah, drops in the midst of our podcast and that is the beef watch of today's episode yeah beef watch we call it the beef watch that's what Fantano calls yeah, his the... thing yeah beef watch 2024 you, you say I look unimpressed because I'm just like I don't because <laughs> you don't know what, what, who the fuck these people are. I do know who Shall the fuck you, they are. We went to Kendrick. Shall look, you have look, of course I like, fucking yeah, know no, who they know are. The, you know no, the, no, I don't mean know who you are. I, mean, like, I don't care it. enough yeah, to see? know their personal yeah. issues. Don't know the shit context, people will be shit bro. people. Human beings are all hypocrites. But this is fun, bro. Yeah. It is, I mean, it is pretty but I cool, I guess, because Kendrick, like, usually will drop an album and then nothing for ages and then drop something later. But now he is... This is really... Oh, yeah, and cool. then at the end of the song, Drake is like, yeah, man, Kendrick, I'm glad that you're rapping again. I'm glad that, you know, I motivated yeah. you to rap back, to go back in the game. Yeah. And, you know, I want you to do the stop telling lies because I'm all, all about the facts. Yeah. No, I'm the facts. I'm actually quite, like, I didn't even think Drake could even, like, hold a candle to Kendrick in terms of, like, nice. anything. But like he's 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 composing himself pretty well, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, say the 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 pen game ain't too. It's not on the Kendrick level yet, but you know he's 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 dropping some yeah. lines. I gotta respect that. Yeah, it's it's the, just some and all, stuff on there. the other hand, like, I mean Kendrick. Not not every one of Kendrick's songs thus far in terms of this beef have always been full of banger lines. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Pers- I still think Meet the Grahams is yeah. significantly the most conceptually, lyrically, just the best one. Yeah, yeah. I and agree. Most of the other ones are a bit more filler. But, yeah. uh, yeah. But, you know, that's kind of the nature of their, their rapping, though. Drake's yeah. more that chill, yeah, um, champagne puppy. Yeah. Easy. Well, Kendrick can go on the attack more. He can go, uh, uh, Stop pushing P. Cause you know I'm pushing pushing T. T. You better stop pushing. And like Drake, <clears throat> he's more of like the. I don't. He is a rapper, but like man, he's a pop artist, bro. Yeah. And like, it's kind of cool to see him doing a bit more. This is just straight he's up going rap. Back to him, yeah. yeah. I guess that's, I do that's like one of Kendrick's it. points of why he hates him. It's like, oh, you're not real. You're not real yeah. that rapper, bro. Yeah. You just a poo poo pee pee actor, a pop artist actor from Degrassi. Yeah, but uh, it is cool either way just to see some good music, good hip hop back, back and forth coming. Hip-hop. Yeah, now's Bar, the time Bar. for it. You know, good shit. Now, time to see who comes out on top. Yeah. Will anyone ever come out on top? Oh, well, you well, gotta prove. Basically, don't even do a diss track. Just submit paperwork <laughs> providing evidence for the claims you've made. When a Pusha T beef, 
Because, like, genuinely, if Kendrick can't uh, validate the daughter thing, I feel like Kendrick's lost low key. Mm. Because, mm. like, what's but what he got? He can prove the pedophile thing. Like, if he can genuinely prove it, then yeah, probably. Yeah, like, what, what but if, if he one loss, fails one to win, fails to prove the daughter thing, and, and then not, and, but and no, else, no, yeah. not really elaborate on the pedophile thing, like yeah, yeah. he's already yeah kind of done. I thing. guess that's true. If no one proves something to be true, but one is proven to be false, that's it. Already loss, questions right? the validity yeah. of the artist exactly. Yeah, that's true. Which is that's why. True. Yeah, this is basically Game of Thrones, the rap community. You know, we got a lot of moving pieces. And then we're going to get to the final season. Basically, Shogun, mm-hmm. some would say. Shogun isn't even finished What? Shogun's done. Yeah, but they didn't finish the story. No, it's done. We Didn't you finish the show? I did finish the show, but he's like, yeah, I guess I'm stuck here, Pat. That's how it ends. It's one book. Make another one. <laughs> hey, there's no need for yeah, a season. Book. People are searching for Shogun oh, season two. Should we talk about... Wait, oh, wait, there was there other things we needed to talk about? Oh, I just want to say I watched Star Wars this weekend. Oh, you did. Yeah, I made the fourth. Watched the original trilogy in the theater. So cool. One thing though, you, have you wait when you watched Star Wars? Did you watch like the special editions from like the late nineties? Yeah. Those are probably on the DVDs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the CGI in them have aged horribly. I don't get why he did that. He replaced like mm. puppets with CGI, and it looks terrible. Well, it's like nineties CGI stuff. So. Yeah, because he he was just like, this is the technology of now, yeah. and I'm just going to... So it remains timeless or whatever. Nah, the puppet stuff looks far better than... Like, the CGI is, like, actually distracting when I watched it. At you time. need to get a new CGI. Yeah. Get it, I guess, get, did they do just, that? Update their CGI every 10 years? No. No? no. Stuck in the 90s? Stuck in the 90s. So George Lucas needs to come along and say, hey, guys, can you do it? do that again? Yeah, do it again. Yeah. Um, you know what else dropped at the May the 4th? What? A new track by Shushanama. Yo, that's crazy. It's the Star Wars. Always going to Shushanama. 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 Like Machinama. But Shushanama. Uh-huh. Shushanama. Shushanama. Can you write that in Chinese characters? Can I write Ama? What's yeah. the significance of the name? But your name's not Chinese. Yeah, so it but can you sense. get a character that sounds like Ama? Sure. Then it'll sound Chinese. Yeah. What Do is you want to be part of the Chinese food gang? Yeah, I want to get in the party, you know. Oh, so what, what, what is it for the audience who doesn't know? What, what are you talking what about, mate? No one knows about this gentleman. No one went to follow the Instagram account. All right, now we're, I, we're gonna oh, drop... no, I liked one of the posts, but I didn't follow yeah, it, I think. No, no one went to follow oh, the Instagram God. account. Because you know, we didn't say follow the account. We said yeah. check the sound. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's drop the bomb here. Shushinama. Shushinama. It's a little, it's a little project with uh, Sun Man and I and another collaborator. Should we name drop? Eh, they can find it out. Oh, it, find they, out it'll, it'll be there own. anyways. But it's a project of Faris where we, you know, we've been writing some little tunes here and there. We're planning to drop more soon. This is our first installment called Hey Fever. I assume you've heard it. I have, I have indeed. Did you like it, sir? I did, man, I did. That's good, that's good. It's very peaceful. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in the mind of Master Yoda. Next we should release Fuck oh, You. Yeah. Is that a diss track on Drake? It's a... Oh no, it was someone. a diss track from years ago. Oh, you should get her to go on the Drake BBL. <laughs> uh, BBL DC. Yeah. No, it's an anti diss track. It's saying fuck you because I like you. That's, uh, that's the premise of a uh, card song, actually. Card? Yeah, like that K pop group I saw like a oh, couple, okay. a few weeks ago. They have a song that, it, true, yeah, that's true. To how the lyrics go. Which people have learned to use that subversion. These, mm. I hate you. Get out of my life because I can't get enough of you. Yeah, ain't that the ain't that the the struggles of man? Uh, yeah, hey fever, <laughs> little little nice too. Another little, struggle of man, hey fever. The base uh bass and nova type chill beat. You know, we got some funny funny lyrics in there. Did you get some funnies in there? I uh, I'll, I'll have to re-listen to. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't have the genius lyrics yeah, out there, unfortunately. The out. We did put lyrics in. The, we did submit lyrics. You gotta yeah. read that. I, know, we, I, I guess the next step is to actually make the genius page. 
Do you have to manually do that? Maybe. I guess. But yeah, there's some oh, little, little puns. You might enjoy your pun, man. As you like puns. You'll enjoy your puns. I, look, I like my double entendre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got the, we got the pen pun game man. in What are you? Uh, Dumb man? Uh, uh, man. Uh, I'm the fun man. Fun fun man. I'm about I the, went for the every other derogatory. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just fun. insulting us. Dis track, dis track, <laughs> beef. I'll, I'll, I'll diss you on Jeez. that BBL track. <laughs> BBL Sunny. BBL Sunny. Yeah, check it Big out. Hay Fever. H A Y F E V E R. <laughs> Spell that. Put it on your Spotify. Link in the. Description. I'm putting the link. Yeah, yeah. Shushanama. Hey, fever by Shushanama. Spell that out. Well, I, it's kind of how you would spell it out, but now you might spell shoe like as shoe. Yeah. S h u s h a n a m a. Yeah. There you go. There's a cat on the on the cover image. That's cool. Click on it. Yeah, cat. Click the cat. Egg the cat. Yeah. Shout out to egg. Shout out to egg. Yeah. You should meet egg. Sure. You've, maybe you know, you arrange on the podcast. You yeah, probably have that one yeah. time you went. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have, I have on your birthday, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it was two weeks, three weeks after. Oh uh, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Birthday party, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So one thing I wanted to bring up in regards to the Star Wars thing, I was just thinking, and I was in my mind palace, thinking of like a hot Star Wars take. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, the prequels are trash. Nah. Nah, no, no, I think, okay, like, let's be real for a second. In terms of, like, an actual movie and not just, like, a, like, I like some of the silliness or whatever. Okay. They're not good I will say Revenge of the Sith is pretty good. I like Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. But Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones are kind of not, they they barely work as movies. They're just, like, to think about technically, they look bad. The fucking acting is bad. The script is bad. Like, literally, every aspect of a movie, it fails at. I think mm. Clone Wars is Attack of the Clones is the worst defender because that movie's boring as shit. Mm. Like everything you probably like about the prequels, I bet it's Revenge of the Sith mainly. But you probably like some of the silliness of Phantom Menace, like Watto and shit like that. Yeah. But there's I, nothing I mean, you like about Attack of the Clones. They one thing. What happened in Attack of the Clones? They, what's the plot? Uh, Anakin goes, I hate Sam. Ex- okay, yeah, that that is true. He does say that. He does say that. Where, which one's Jar Jar Binks? The first Phantom. one. Okay. Yeah. So that's why. Attack the Clones is literally a nothing. It's a filler. And that's my problem mm. with the <clears throat> prequels, right? Everyone goes to the sequels go like, oh, this is what happens when you have no roadmap or whatever. Yeah. But then if you look at the prequels, this is how, what happens when you have just an end goal and don't know how to get there. Same thing, I guess, yeah. So it's like, no, it's the exact opposite, but both are bad. You know what I mean? Mm. But like both, like, so... With so the, the, the new ones don't have an ending they planned. Yeah, okay. but the the so with the Phantom Menace and like that series, they're just like, oh, okay, we want to get to the point of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, like that's what we're all here for. Everything up until then is filler. Uh-huh. I think Phantom Menace, George Lucas still tried to set up some stuff. Like what the? And he said like Jar Jar Binks is the key to this all or whatever, and then abandoned that like after the movie came out. So like uh-huh. he clearly didn't really i don't know Clo- attack of the clothes is literally just filler like there's absolutely mm. nothing about attack of the clothes like i mean i know i'm being a bit be exaggeratory but star like wars universe? what jar jar binks was supposed to be frodo in the star wars universe i thought it was meant to be palpatine or some shit like i don't know like oh, yeah, i knew yeah, sith I've, Lord, like I've palpatine's master or something it, yeah. yeah but if he's saying he's the key yeah. to it all could have been like a frodo character like a frodo. You know, you bring the ring to the fucking yeah could to be. Palpatine. <laughs> to Palpatine. Yeah. Gives him a ring. I'm suddenly imagining, imagining Jar Jar Binks as like a celestial from mm. Marvel. From Marvel, yeah. And he's, Maybe. he's been the king of the universe since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. But yeah. But whereas I think the sequels... Like, I don't... Bear in mind, I don't like the prequels or the sequels, okay? So like... Mm-hmm. But in defense of the sequels, I guess, they are just generally movies which i yes. can't say the same about all of the prequels even mm. even revenge of the sith is sort of a movie i don't think it's a real like it is kind of a movie but it's kind of like the ending of a movie without like yeah. i don't know because was he trying to do a, a movie arc across three movies yeah but with the main emphasis being the third movie i think yeah. 
that was the idea. Because I think he kind of locked himself into it needs to be three movies because I made three originals. Yes, yes. And then same thing with the Disney ones, right? And if you like think about it, like when they put out Force Awakens, their goal was probably just to make a good Star Wars movie. And I didn't like it. But some mm. I know a lot of people do like The Force Awakens. So I feel like that shows the the Disney mentality and the way they were going to do it. They were going to make, let's make one good movie and see where we go from that, I guess. Which is, I guess, the right way to do it in a way. But I guess in terms of Star Wars, you need to have a plan as well as that. you got to be like... Yeah, in this I day and age of... Because it needs to be a franchise and all that, yeah. Franchise, you got to have a plan. And then Disney dropped Rogue One and that was the best Star Wars since Return of the Jedi. You can't change my mind. <laughs> Compared to the sequels, it's, it's a movie. It's, it's actual a movie. It's an actual movie. Yeah, it has a, a beginning, a middle, an and end. Because they're not trying to. It has know, characters. Think about sequels, but your yeah. trilogies. They should have done that. Yeah. But no. I mean, I feel like the, yeah, the DC ones <clears throat> did actually try to make movies because they did set up interesting characters and they fumbled the bag with all of them. Yeah. But, like, yeah. Whereas. Where it's like, yeah, with the George Lucas one, it's like, even the the the, the first Phantom Menace is so separated from the next two, they change the actor for Anakin and everything, it's like, there's well, like, a, a little boy. yeah, so like, they skip time and all of that, so there's still a disconnect. Also, but I was actually watching um, Empire Strikes Back, and I, I didn't, it didn't occur to me but until rewatching it that... It seems like there should have been like a bit of like a, maybe there's a pretty cool comic between the events of New Hope mm -hmm. and Empire because so it feels like suddenly things just start happening. That's like, yeah, they, 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 how did they get skip. that from there? A bit of a yeah, time it's a bit skip, of a time yeah. skip. Yeah. But yeah. That's true. Anyway, my point being, original trilogy good, everything else bad. <laughs> Except Rogue One. Rogue One's good. How about the TV shows? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I don't really... I know a lot of people are like, ooh, the Clone Wars, and I'm just like... Eh? eh? Sometimes it's cool. I don't really, to be fair, I don't really like, I don't, I'm not into like cartoons. Which wow. I know is like kind of, it's not, no, it's not all the, just like generally speaking, uh, it's like most cartoons I don't really fuck with. You like a Demon Slayer though. Mm. I sort of like, it's, uh, yeah, I do, but like, I don't know, Demon Slayer is a bit different. It's also for adults, so like. Nah, bro. What do you mean? It's, it's, a, it's a shonen manga. Yeah, but it's like... It's for 12-year-olds. Nah, it's blood and guts and shit. It's rated yeah, uh, MA or whatever. 12-year-olds love that yeah, kind of shit. It's literally it. like 15 plus. So? That's, 12, that's, that's not... What are you talking 12, about? It's basically 12. Nah, man, okay. Oh, shut up, Drake. I like my women yeah. older than consent <laughs> level uh, age. Um, you say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, I just quick side thing. Um, we will cover this eventually because we're in the final arc. But um, I've been watching X Men ninety seven, and that's actually a really fucking good animated it's a show. Cartoon, isn't it? It's kind of, well, it starts off as like a PG show, then yeah. all the episodes become M towards the end because oh. it gets darker. Yeah. And like they're dealing with like, like straight up, without spoiling anything, there is a direct nine eleven event, like inspired by nine eleven, using similar imagery. A second plane crashed into the like pre uh, mutant mansion. Uh, pretty much. Dang. <laughs> like crazy shit in that show, but um, it's that's that's really good. Man, Charles and I didn't really even that, care that much for the nineties show. Invaded to the pilot's mind. And oh, you don't know what you don't know event. about Charles yet. You haven't. I, I don't well, I guess this is spoilers because we had this. This is before the show starts, but Charles yeah. is not there. Charles he is not did. in the show at Dang. the start because he left he. at the end of X Men. 97. He was dying. And then people... And then that's what the 90s audience is left with. He's dying and then the show got cancelled. So people don't know if he lived he or not. Die. Maybe he comes back in this. Anyway, sorry. That was just a little weird tangent comes or whatever. Back in Deadpool. Maybe. Yeah. So you watched the... You watched all the Star Wars films? The originals. Originals. Yeah. Okay. okay. I might do the prequels next year as well. But I just don't like the prequels unless they've made like some visual changes to it. Maybe the uh, like, George Lucas 40th anniversary edition. I don't know. Like the the in Phantom Menace, the visuals are kind of 
terrible. <laughs> like hard to look at sometimes with its CG and whatnot. Big like the tank. puppetry in um the original trilogy is so fucking good. Like yeah, genuinely looking good. back and stuff like I don't know the fucking Rancor and shit like that. Mm. So well done. Great true. stuff, great stuff. That's true. Anyway, sorry, I went a bit too long on Star Wars. Do you want to, should we talk about the actual stuff we're talking about all today? Right, all right, let's talk about my TV shows. Yes, this yeah, is no TV movies. show week at the Unholy Trinity because we got Fall Guy early in Australia, so we've already yeah. reviewed it. You can check yeah. out that episode if you haven't. What yeah. we watch, we watched the show Gun. And Not Ripley. Do you know, oh wait, hold on, before we get into Ripley, I just want to mention, do you know a thing called Ripley's Believe It or Not? No. Yeah, I don't know. It's just something that was been in my mind. I just remember it, but I don't remember it. And then I've been to asking people, and then nobody remembers it. Nobody except knows. I think Nelson remembers it, and that's it. It's one of those bear, uh, what's it called? The Weinstein bear situation. I was going to say bear grills. I thought you were going to say Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> now, you know the, how people don't know how to, how to pronounce that one name yeah, of yeah. a bear book? Yeah. It's, it's the Mandela it's, effect you're talking yeah, about. Mandela yeah, Mandela effect false memory thing. Yeah. So only Nelson knows. Yeah. That means you two have the Mandela effect. No, no, no. What if you guys have been Mandela affected? We're the only because we're the minority, yeah, right? So we're so like, which we're, one's correct though? Maybe we're the real. Yeah. Anyway, which one do you want to talk about first, guys? Shogun. Shogun. Where's the second book? Well, we can get we can yeah, talk more well. spoilers if you want later, and I can give some of the context around the book. Yes. So I did a little bit of research, but not that much. All right, Shogun. What's up with Shogun? Shogun. A lot of people are calling this the game, the Japanese like Game of Thrones. Oh, you know all, the, all the uh-huh. mind games. Which, yeah. But I, I don't know. For me, when I was watching, I was like, and that was my expectation, but I don't really think it is. Not kind like of. Because it's not, person. this is definitely more focused around a central group of characters. Well, like, so is Game of Thrones, but Game of Thrones, you're kind of dealing with different factions and getting yeah, perspectives. perspectives. Right? Yeah. This one does it a little bit, but not to the point where you'll ever, like, sympathize with them. Or, like, to the, you don't really get in their head, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I think the show is very interesting. And... A lot of the stuff that I like about the show is like in a whole reflection that comes together at the end because the ending is what they do with the ending is really interesting and it's like thematically ties everything together and puts like a lot of context for why they've done stuff in the show in a certain way. Like one of the big complaints, well not complaints, one of the things that like I didn't like but maybe it was intentional sort of vibe was I didn't like the white guy at the start. I think you were meant to not really like yeah. him, and he's like... Yeah. Fucking Brit. But his role in the show is super interesting by the end, because Torinaga does, like, this great speech at the end, and kind of relates his role within the world of the thing, and how it relates to us as an audience, the character's role. Yeah. And I think... Well, we'll talk about that later. But yeah. So I, I think it was interesting following him, following him thinking he's, like, the protagonist, basically. And I guess he is to some extent, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just going, I hate this fucking guy. He's but so fucking you, annoying. You get to be like, hi, I guess he's alright. Yeah, he kind of, he has an arc. He does. Yeah. It's a little bit, um... Like Avatar or whatever. I guess so, yeah. I yeah, think. It's about, you know, uh, assimilating yeah. to a new... But bear in mind, the novel it was written in the 50s, I believe. Mm. By a white man. <laughs> That means that he assimilated, bruh. Yeah. Oh, he just made it up. Yeah. He made that shit up. Real. Um, yeah. So, anyway, sorry. What did you guys think of this show? Damn, I thought this show kind of busted respectfully, though. Yeah. Kind of, kind of interesting. Really? A religion for, like, Japanese film. Yeah. Some of that katsudan, you know, <laughs> box set. Yeah, you were there. I don't, I don't. If they can do, like, historical <laughs> Chinese well, that's not made from shitty Chinese production mm. companies that so I can't you, watch. You want a white you man, want a white man to do it, basically. Well, I want a white company to do it with the Hollywood budget, but with the expertise yeah, okay. in Japan. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay. We'll make that for you. Yeah. We'll do that for you. Yeah. That's why I rewatched Ghost of Tsushima in Japanese dub. 
a lot. Mm. No, yeah. Okay. Kurosawa version of the black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's gonna be white guy in the Ming Dynasty. He'll show yeah. up, be like, "Hey, man, Ming Dynasty pussy got me acting up." <laughs> This is what happened to our white guy in the, yeah, in the show. Without getting into too much spoilers. But um, yeah, I also really, really like the show. This could potentially... I think it's up there with some of my favorite favorite shows I watched this mm-hmm. year, they say. Mm-hmm. Definitely, Definitely. Top there, on top in this year. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, so I guess it's... What would you describe? It's like a political drama yeah political drama mixed with kind of like thing. that avatar-y like char- mm. foreign character arrives he's like what's going on here are these people mm. savages is, or barbarians is what they say yeah. like, and you know, they're like you know you're the barbarian you might think it's a white savior story but not really yeah that's why i think the mm-hmm. last episode really changes the perspective mm-hmm. of the show which we'll get into in spoilers it's not a dune it's not a dune Bear in mind, I still love Dude. Dude's so yeah. fucking good. Um, yeah. Um, great characters, I feel. Um, my favorite character was... Uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy. The, the, the sneaky guy. guy yeah. yeah. What I a funny guy. He's, he's kind of a, a he's kind of little bitch, but like also, he's funny. He's just like me, for real. Yeah. Funny guy. Um, I also, like... Um, I think my... Other than him, my favorite character was probably um, what's her name? The one from uh, Monarch. The from Monarch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At first, I was like, "Who is this? I've never seen her before." She's also like an idol or something. Apparently, he said yeah. X, some idol group. No, that was something to do with something else. I was talking about. Oh, that was. I was talking about the still in the idol group. No, this this actress, she used to do like singing or something. Yeah. Yeah. Monarch chick. Uh, son of big Godzilla yeah. man, and um, she's so the good son. in this. By the way, like the son, because uh, I only like, exposure to her, I guess, was through Monarch. But like, she's I think she was really good at Monarch still. But like, she's really, yeah. really good at this one. And I feel like oh. she carries a lot of the show through, especially like that kind of middle portion of the show where mm-hmm. it's kind of like nothing's really happening too much. But like, she got she got stuff going on. She got that machination. Yeah, because also character-wise, she has a probably one of the biggest roles because it's translating two sides. You know, you got the white man yeah. and everyone else. So she knows both sides. Yeah, and know? then maybe she has kind of like and she has her own, her own agenda yeah. and maybe like, yeah. Deep character. Good yeah. character shit there, you know. Real. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought she was really, really good. Um, yeah. I don't know if I ever... I thought the white man was okay at the end, but like I don't, I didn't love him. But I don't think no. that. But by the end, I don't think that's the point because yeah. he's not really the main character. You kind of realize it's more. He, he's, the title he's of the, the main character. Well, I mean, yeah, this isn't really. He's, he's the but like, yeah. If you were a white man, maybe you'd be in this man position. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely yeah. But I feel like Tornago. Start of the show, mate. He's kind arguably of a, the. You know, he's winning his beef, you know. Or he's, is he? He's been, we he's been sneak we'll this talk noise, spoilers he's, he's later, but spoiler. like, yeah. So basically, the main central conflict of the show is the there's like a council that kind of rules over Japan um, yeah, on they had behalf emperor, of the right? yeah the then Taiko, but the Taiko died, and the next heir is too young to rule. Yeah. So basically, there's this council that pretty much it, it, it's it's really some Game of Thrones type shit. They're like basically Who making all the, the throne, decisions right? and saying it's on behalf of the Taiko. And some of them might be getting a bit greedy and want a bit more power. Some of them see Tornaga as a threat, and that's kind of like where a lot of the conflict mm-hmm. stem. And the crux of the story, I guess, is like Tornaga is. Uh, What's the, what's the thing like he's being um there was a term for it hey, yeah, but, uh, but they're like hey you, you, you out of here you dog impeached? he's conspiring yeah impeached right oh yeah he's getting impeached because uh 
what was he doing? Uh, why why did why did the ops hate him, bro? The something that the the heirs mother was there. Now before. Oh, that, you think this is like a host? They, I think they, just genuinely, he's too sexy. Yeah. And they're like, boo. Oh, he's too smart. Yeah. Too sexy. Too smart. And like, yeah, he could. Well, they saw him as a threat, I guess, just because. Because he's not. He's in got the, the game, moral right? values, yeah, he's maybe. Not, he's not with the boys. He's not with the boys. He's, he's like the ops, people. you know. And uh, so yeah, that's. And so this show is kind of like, what is Toradaga gonna do? Because impeachment in this time means death yeah pretty much because everything's because like yeah, everything means death at all times which um that's an that's interesting part the of theme. it right yeah yeah it reminds me of in uh godzilla minus one how they were kind of criticizing how like the government or whatever they die. don't value i guess it's like a pretty historically japanese thing of like yeah. death isn't really valued like life isn't that valued in a way and people just like the... It's seen as honorable, right? It's better than living like a pussy, bruh. Yeah. But, like, even for stupid stuff, like, man touches bird or whatever, or fish or something, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Man touches fish, die. No, it's just the bird corpse. Yeah. Well, it's because a white man said, no yeah. one touch or die. Yeah. And he forgot. That was funny, funny yeah. translation prank. <laughs> that was the lost in translation. It is literally, bruh. Um, yeah. That's real though. You know, you get to see the white man perspective like, damn, these fellas, they be dying all the time. They even want to kill themselves yeah, on a lot of occasions. Which I feel like is like, yeah, that's valid, bro. That's valid. That's valid. Um, yeah, there's also, um, similar kind of to Game of Thrones, how like, Game of Thrones has the internal politics and then there's the threat of the White Walkers, which I guess is kind of like in this show where it's like, the politics of all the Japanese people, but also there's also the threat of the white people. Yeah. <laughs> the white yeah. walkers. That's true, though. Yeah. You got the Portuguese. Yeah, the Portuguese. And Which, oh, by the way, for the first, like, three episodes, I just was completely lost in not understanding that by Portuguese, like, when they're speaking in Portuguese, they mean English. I yeah, thought it was so... just something they've done for the audience to understand, but no, 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 because they haven't had any contact with English people. They just, English is Portuguese. Yes. Yeah. But that's also for us to understand. Wouldn't well, no, no, no. It like English they speak English, but like the Portuguese speak English. I thought they were speaking Portuguese the whole time. No, so that's what I thought, and then I literally had to like look it up to understand. Mm-hmm. And but then no, no, how no. did the, the chick no the chick don't know how to speak English? No, English is Portuguese. There's, they've never met an English person before. The first English man to wash up was, was the white guy. guy. So, the, so in, the, in reality, yeah, it, they're speaking Portuguese, but in the show, for us, there's no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, no, they yeah, call English say. Portuguese. Yeah. So the Portuguese are English. The Portuguese. They are speak English. English, but the Japanese assume they're speaking Portuguese because they don't know. Because mm. they've never met an English. England doesn't even exist to, uh, to them. So why are the, the Portuguese speaking to the Japanese people, they're actually teaching them English. Yeah, but it's, por- yeah, but they call it Portuguese because they're the Portuguese people are speaking it. Yeah. Yeah. But then, but why would the Portuguese teach it to the Japanese people? So they can communicate. So and also, they, they would maybe Portuguese. they're doing some colonization aspects as well. No, they would Whatever. teach them actual Portuguese, not English. Nah, they speak, they just speak English. That's just In the way it universe. works. I mean, it makes sense for their side of the world. English would probably be the one they speak. Everyone, all the European the like they speak. Linguistics thing about English people traveling and spreading English. Yeah, aphorism. but it's Portuguese people. But it, it would make sense for the Portuguese to speak English elsewhere as yeah, well. Yeah, because English just, is an international language. It's the lingua then, franca is the technical term. You updated with this info, bruh. I've learned my colonial history. The Dutch only speak Dutch. They don't speak no English. So do the Portuguese. They speak Portuguese to their fellow men and to the l- lower slaves. Zero out of ten show. Historically inaccurate. We nah, yeah, show. but like, they're, they're, speaking, they're speaking English because they're foreigners and they're like, yeah, it's an yeah, English yeah, that's thing. that's fair. You can, you can say, all right, they're speaking English. It's a English, business transaction, mate. But it doesn't make sense if they're teaching the Japanese Catholics English. 
As opposed to Portuguese. Yeah. But why not? Because... Because that's dumb. You're trying oh, to convert oh, them to your own carnitas, religion carnitas. in Portuguese. And it's... Well, because you want it to spread, Spain, right? If you, if you want it to spread... You would spread your mother tongue like kings, bruh. But is it English like the language that... No, it's the language of Brits. And they all hate Brits. Because they're oh, Portuguese they're and they're Brit. Dutch. Damn. And all the other fellas in Europe are like, fuck the queen. We got our own king. And the France, the French, when well, they don't go to Africa and be like, all right, speak English. They go, wee oui, wee, oui, eat the baguette. Yes? <laughs> they you do that. Sure. That's true. That's true. Maybe that is historically inaccurate. So is it, I'm guessing it's only for the show if you're saying that's what's could happening. Could be, could be. But I don't know. It seems like, because the show is majority in Japanese and they do subtitles, like, wouldn't they still... See, that's why I thought it's just like, oh, because it's just so easier, the, easier for the audience, right? Maybe. I don't, 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 don't pull this English supremacy shit on me, all right? Okay, but yeah, mm-hmm. they're speaking in English. They are. But yeah. Anyway, where, where was this going? I can't remember what the thing was. They, they're teaching the language because, you know, they talk. Yeah, yeah. Both sides. All good people on both sides. Yeah. Good people. Uh, a white man he go in there yeah. Horanaga be like hmm what to do and oh that's actually out. one of the inciting conflicts right because they're like why does Torinaga have this white man yes yeah. but he's using the white man as a bargaining chip yeah that's what happened and what's yeah. happening alright I feel like we gotta talk some spoilers to kind of get the mm, full grasp yeah, of what's going on. What you think of the, the whole, you know, the show? It look, oh, the presentation is very nice. good. I think it looks quite yes. nice. You know, the sets are very cool, very uh, maybe probably authentic. Yeah, I wouldn't know a hundred percent, but you know, it looks like some medieval. They Japan went back in time shit. for yeah. it there. Yeah, looks some looks like some medieval Japan. They got swords, katanas, katanas. Everywhere. They got the robe. They got the got the kimonos, the yukatas, the chopped yeah. heads on the ground. They got the, <laughs> they got the ships. They got there. authentic chopped heads, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The heads look pretty cool. You know, you see the rolling heads. Good head, bro. Good. Head. Um, yeah. Uh, the music's good. Cool opening. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and good good acting and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Fight scenes look good. Yeah, they'd be a samurai. Yeah, which there aren't many. I just, uh, If you're going into yeah. this expecting it's a lot of fighting, it's really not. And that's kind of the moral of the story is really kind of, we want to succeed in things without violence. Violence, violence, yeah. It's all about the mind fights. Yeah. The, the, the mental Like gymnastics. using AI Snoop Dogg and AI Tupac. Tupac. But yeah. It goes in there. So yeah. Um kinda yeah, the gist of it, it's it's I think it's well written. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Initially, like as I was watching, I was kinda like we're losing a little I wasn't really sure of like who were we meant to be focusing on as mm-hmm. we're kinda like we start off with the white man, kinda shift towards the uh what's her name? Uh, something, something, with an M. Some... something with an M, Mo, I think. Mo... Momo. But the, the girl from Monarch. <laughs> you Mari- kind of follow her Mari- for a bit. Oh, Marika? Marika. Marika. Because the Portuguese yeah. men call her Maria. Like, yeah. M- Maria, Maria. That yeah. one song. Shut the fuck up, Portuguese man. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, then you kind of follow her and then it kind of shifts towards Torinaga at the end. But then it kind of makes sense as to why they do it because it's all part of a strategy. And I feel yeah. like... A lot of the strats mind games, right? So the show itself is playing mind games with us as to where yeah. we're meant to be looking. And I thought that aspect was really, really cool. That's true. Also, this show kind of reminded me of, in a way, Three Body Problem. Because that was like theories of how stuff would happen. And a lot of this is, I guess, also kind of theory. And you may see some of the theory play out, but maybe not. Such as the finale, which we'll get to. Like, that has a lot of... The finale is kind of pretty much mostly theoretical stuff yeah. about the future that may or may not pan out. Which, from my understanding, is in line with the novel. This ends there. Yeah. Damn. 
which I'll talk about in spoilers mm-hmm. because maybe you'll watch some trivia or some shit. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. I feel like there's enough to be said about the non-spoiler section. I think it's absolutely worth the watch. Go check it out. Mm. Bang a show. You Very guys enjoyed it too. I think it's a three thumbs up from the... Three thumbs up from the three body problem. All right. All right, let's just the spoilers. Uh, just quickly on that thing. From my understanding in the novel, um, they also do like the battle, but it's like one paragraph. So it's like literally does not mm. matter. But like we'll the go- end, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Because that, that's not, like, the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we'll get to that. So let's break down the spoilers, right? Break it down. So, funny pirate man wash up on the shore. But he say he not pirate. But he says he's a pirate. He says he's a merchant. He's a little British merchant. But he's a little British bitch, and he's a liar. And I hate <laughs> him. Yeah. I liked when he got pissed on at the start. That made me laugh. That's pretty cool. That was yeah. like pretty cool. That's like that Drake, uh, Kendrick said, oh, don't let yourself get pissed on by yeah. another man. Because yeah. Drake got pissed on, apparently. He did, he did. Kendrick reference. Yeah. They know, they know. They, know, they know what's up. Um, okay, so Drake gets in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, because he, uh, British merchant, and his crew was carrying like 20 cannons and like a bunch of guns or something. Yeah. So they, they got confiscated, you know. Bro, I forgot that guns existed in this world. But then yeah, uh, they when did. they started firing guns, I was like, oh, yeah, guns. He guns have been around guns. for a while. They do, because, you know, the Chinese, they're smart. They made yeah, fireworks. They, yeah. They start shooting fireworks. It's real. Um, yeah. So we've got, so we got a, we got a villain, this dude. What's we his name? Main ops. With the main op, and it's kind of interesting the way the council is like fully with him at the kind of start, and he then yeah. the council like slowly loses faith in this guy. It's about um, aligning interests, right? So at the start, they got all the same goal there. It's like, yeah, fuck Toro Naga, we want him out. Yeah, it's like uh, 12 Angry Men in that way. I don't know if you get that reference, oh. but that's about like the jurors, and then there's yeah. one guy that thinks the accused didn't do it and then the entire movie just in one room he convinces every single person that yeah, yeah. he may not have done it what tote bag oh jewel <laughs> yeah Real. but you know Toronaga's smart you know he he slowly starts gathering things as bargaining chips to yeah. you know Get all the other guys to back off. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And some people will be like, bro, Toronag, you're not doing anything. Do something, bro. And then, oh it, my God. as an audience, they're also kind of like, Damn, well, I don't Toronag. know. Is Toronag going to do something? Because there's a point in the show where his son dies. And after That's that, later. it's kind of like, yeah. is he doing anything or is he, has he given up sort of vibe? Yeah. But he's the entire time, bro, bro is plotting. plotting. Also, with the, the son's death, an interesting thing. Am I skipping too far ahead, or it's a bit far? A bit but, far. You know, so we can talk about it though. Well, the son dies in a very Game of Thrones way, where he just like slip falls and slip Does that and falls and dies. Time in Game of Thrones. That's not, that's like in Game of Thrones. They don't. Do, they're pretty. Sometimes they'll do like dramatic death, but sometimes they'll just be like someone just yeah, died. But this bro. one's like uh, essential to his story arc, to the son story arc, because yeah. it's all ironic to what he he stands for, I guess. Stand, yeah, but now he fell. Well, the interesting thing with that is like there's uh, one of the key concepts of the show is like fate, right? Yes, and uh, great. The the ending of the show is so good, but like Toronaga talks about how he he doesn't control phases, he studies fate. So it's kind of like, yeah, you could interpret the sun dying as an accident, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because it is like, it, yeah, there's no way, like, like maybe it was Toronaga orchestrated, he put like yeah. it made it extra slippery or something. Yeah. Because it does end up benefiting his plan because it gives him more mm-hmm. time and whatnot. But it's like, Toronag is so in tune with fate and stuff that maybe he could predict it based on, like, his, the son's actions. The son's shown yeah. to be really reckless. One of the biggest, like, stingers at the end of one of the episodes was with the cannons. Yeah, yeah. Where he just annihilates... The messenger. The messenger, which basically is what pretty much kicks off ag- actual war. That's, you know, you're declaring war if you kill yeah. the messenger. Don't, don't shoot the messenger, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, constantly throughout the show, you kind of go like... He's going to die soon. 
Or like, you know, something's yeah. gonna happen this yeah. guy. And I was like, it's somewhere or another he's gonna die in this scene yeah. anyway, because like, ain't no way he's gonna succeed. That, but like, what a horrific way to go out, by the way. Just like, that was pretty fucking shocking, I feel. It was pretty like, damn, bruh. I mean, how how the turns turntable. Hey? Yeah. And but yeah, then but then with like the whole thing of like, is this like how intentional is this to like Toronaga's mm. plan? Blah blah blah. Um, I think there's also another great scene where you get Toronaga's old friend, who is so because Toronaga kind of puts up this facade, was well, eventually revealed to be a facade, but like you're not really sure that he's kind of given up and he's like mm. whatever. So he's like oldest friend. He's like yo, what the fuck, bro? Don't do this. We gotta stand your ground, or whatnot. Yeah. And to the point where that's obviously dishonorable to say that he ends up having to dog. commit he's seppuku, like, no, right? Some disrespect shit. You better kill yourself yeah. now. And that's really what put in the mind of the enemies that Tarnak has seriously given up. Yeah. But the entire time Tarnak has been on the I'm gonna fight front, right? Now he's playing forty chess. Because he's playing forty chess. Ten songs ahead, like Kenny. Yeah. Um, to the point where it's like, did the old friend know? Like, yeah. we don't did really he know. know. Did he know? Did he Thumbnail know? question. Yeah. Mark. Red circle around. Red circle. Uh, and then the riddler. Something. Yeah. In the image. <laughs> in the <red> the riddler. <laughs> yeah. See, to quote uh, BBL Drizzy, it's God's plan. Yeah. You know, like, not that's God. Drizzy but Toradaga is the god of this. Yeah. Um, Batman. And then you got Mariko, right? Which Mariko san. Mariko san. Yeah, her whole deal, she she has a very strong motivation as to her like she wants revenge for what happened to her family and all that. Yes. I guess Toronaga kinda uses that to his advantage as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, leading to like some of the best moments of the, like the last few episodes are kinda like the Crimson Sky plan or whatever, which he says he's not gonna do. He says he is gonna do this, he's not gonna do like mm -hmm. that's constantly yeah, playing my games, right? Yeah. But like he gets her to basically they, like, his whole deal stuff. was kinda like the only act of violence he will do is like, I guess not direct violence. Not direct violence. And I guess no one super innocent is getting hurt because she wanted to do it. It's like it's violence with consent. Yeah, with consensual violence. And it's like... Like, her... her for, throughout the entire show, she's like, I want to fucking die. Yeah. But, like, this kind of gives yeah. her a lot more purpose and yeah, all that. Yeah. And it's Chance like... for revenge. It's pretty fucking cool because it literally prevents the war, but also makes him win. Yeah. He gets because, the yeah. But obviously, it gets, like, theoretical. Like, maybe this didn't work hypothetically. But, like... It is heavily implied that Tornag is so good at this shit that he can pretty much see the future. Then he sees, like, the hypothetically how the battle would play out, and there is no battle, bro. Mm. Like, um, with the civilian death and all of that, and all, um, it, he ends up getting power from, from the rest of the council in the future, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. But, you know, with the, with Mariko-san's thing, you know, they baited the 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 ops to let go of the the families, right? Yeah, and yeah. That that means they lose all their bargaining chips. Yeah, up there. and also it meant that um, because Toranaga's son's dead, he'd still have an heir because he got his heir back. Oh, yeah, he got that baby. Because those are, that's his um. Yeah, he got his baby mama. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> What's the term for it there? Uh, co uh, concubine. I don't think it's con is it concubine. Yeah, right. A concubine, uh, it's a group of the women for the... Yeah, it's a concubine. Well. Con... concubine. I'll double check word. for... Something. Concubine is a word. Yeah, yeah, it's concubine. Porcupine. Brackets in polygamous society. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah. Got the baby mamas out. Yeah. But that's actually the smart move. So it's like he got the baby mama out and then he got, got the, the bargaining shit. Out, yeah. There's a lot of, yeah. See, there's a lot of strategy, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. even within that, the strategy of how... Mariko would go about getting them out, but then she was never going to leave anyway. Like, that's... She knows she gotta die. Yeah. And also Mariko appealing to the queen, not queen, but like, I guess what would you call it? The, the mother of the heir, because Baby they used to mom. be friends. Oh, yeah. 
Like, and that has, because she has so much sway because she's the mother of the heir, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. And she's also got her own agenda, like, so many moving parts and all that. Yeah, well, yeah. the only, what was the agenda of the, 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 the mom of the heir? She was just like, I hate Toronaga. Yeah. Man, fuck Toronaga. That was her whole deal. But then, she's the one that, and the only she's one. the one that actually in the hypothetical future changes everything she did the persuade the ops because she gets the letter and persuades yeah, yeah. so persuade, it's like a complete yeah. somehow toronaga managed to turn this massive hatred yeah she he yeah got the hate around me. and maybe it's because of her huge hatred towards toronaga that makes like She's like she ain't she ain't devious or whatever. She's mm. very clear on her perspectives and stuff. Yeah. So it's like if you know someone that well, I guess in that regard, like you know what they stand for, or whatever, you can figure. You can create your strat around that. You know. Yeah. Was it yeah. more of like, oh man, you don't want this war, and then she's like, I guess I don't. Well, yeah, and also because um. I can't even remember also, what was. Oh, because Mariko died. Yeah, because Mariko died. And Mariko right? was a friend. And she's like, yeah. damn, did that need to happen? And then Toronaga sent an email being like, <laughs> yeah, bitch. Yeah. So you better stop. So you now. see the rest of the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the council, OVO, yeah. The OVO crew. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, all right. Yeah. Stop. It. And um, so, yeah, in regards to the white guy, they kind of do like the dances with wolves thing of like, yeah, he mm. gets in, he becomes part of the society, kind of teaches them stuff with the guns. But no, it, that was all just a red herring. That was completely, none of that was ever going to be useful, the canon stuff, none of that. Um, yeah, because Tornaga, he's. Yeah, and Tornaga literally head. said he's just a distraction. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he uses bargaining chip, and most importantly, he's just around because I find him funny. He literally says that. It's kinda, yeah, it's, it's, and then, it's it, then it clicked for me. It's like, wait, that's what he was to the audience as well. It's like yeah. he was never meant to be the main character, and you you start the show by thinking he is, and you think mm -hmm. he has a bigger role, and he's constantly asking, "What's my role in Crimson Dawn or whatever?" It's the Crimson Dawn mm -hmm. Star Wars, isn't it? Crimson Sky. Yeah. Like, what's my role and whatever? And he but just is meant to be the funny white guy. That's why it's like, yeah, you do, you ain't yeah. gonna do nothing. You're just here to be funny. Yeah. And I think that was kind of fucking genius. True. Yeah. Tornaga genius. Which is why I don't think the show needs a sequel. And the showrunners has said, no, nah, we're not doing a sequel. Because, like, I feel like that kind of ruins the fate aspect to it. If you know mm. exactly what's going to happen. Because, like, I, I don't need to. Really. I feel like. The implication, as they say, this always yeah. um, is enough, right? And yeah. that's kind of like the vibe. Mm -hmm. And they killed my favorite character at the end. Big man, uh, what's his name? Fun, funny man. Yeah, can't remember his name, but he's yeah. what a funny guy. And like th the fact that Toronaga knows because this guy's so fucking slimy, he's gonna betray him, and he can predict that stuff. But he knows, but so he knows he he'll come it. back, and then yeah, so fucking smart. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, my Rico son. You were a real one. Real one. For real. Tornaga couldn't have done this without you. See you on Monarch Season 2. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next, the battles against Goji. For real, for With real. Go With Gojira. Oh, there's also, uh, there's, there's like earthquakes as well. In the show. And fun fact, Disney mm. Plus now has like a content warning for that. Like, this depicts earthquakes. PTSD from earthquakes. I think that's the virus. Oh, like, yeah. it might give you PTSD or whatever. I mean, uh, earthquakes yeah. are kind of scary. I mean, Tornaga got buried. I thought like he was going to fucking yeah, die straight up at that point. Yeah, like, and White Man saved him. Yeah. He, he's, he's chill like that. Yeah. But he's also fine. Yeah, I think that's right after he tried to kill himself. The White Man? Yeah. And then Tornaga's like, stop that. Yeah. Get some help. And Toronaga's whole thing of like, yo, we'll rebuild your ship and then we'll keep destroying it so he never leaves. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's funny. This kind of base. This kind of base, yeah. Crazy though. Uh, did you have a complaint or something you wanted to make? I can't remember. I want you to tell me about the book. Oh yeah, that, that's kind of kind of it. I was just yeah, saying exactly. like, there wasn't really much of the battle. It was just like apparently, allegedly a paragraph. And yeah, just like, 
and mm. said that, I guess. Like, he the point. author does like he has kind of like a series, but not like a series series, but like mm. um where he's a white man who goes to Asian countries. Yo. So maybe you will get your Chinese historical thing out of that. You know, speaking of Chinese historical things, you know, they talked about Macau. I you know honestly don't remember the because so, really that's the Portuguese uh, secret base. Oh yeah. They just, they uh, store shit in Macau because they took that from the Chinese at some point. And like how that Macau became a central thing in some previous wars with one of the clans. Yeah. Because that's where they store the guns. So the Portuguese has been they've been siphoning guns from Macau to the, the army they're back in. Yeah. And that's how they gain their influence in Nihongo. Because there's also some uh, some uh, uh what's what what do you call them uh, fake samurais? <laughs> the dum 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 like mercenary samurais. Oh fuck. They've been they've been I living know, in Macau yeah, as well. Yeah. So they, they got they got some business there. What's the term for that? There was a term. There is a term. But that's like one of the early things the white man was like, yo, I can tell you about this shit and you can let me go or some shit. Yeah. And Toronaga's like, yo, that's cool. So they use that for a bit. Yeah. But yeah. I kind of wanted to see the, the, the Portuguese, the downfall of the Portuguese, bro. I mean... That would have been interesting. Do they have a downfall? I mean... They never really were too active in Japan. Yeah. So they it's got kicked out. It's more if they're like... Yeah. The, the, it's the, also... the only reason is they got kicked out because yeah. Japan became... Yeah. But they still got that cultural influence, I guess. With the religious aspect yeah. and whatnot, and I, that still continued, right? Pretty much when um, yeah. Yeah. when Japan did become a closed country, Portugal, well, no, sorry, yeah, the the, the Dutch were the only the the Japanese letting. Yeah, that's just wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Should wonderful. we go final verdicts, mate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Shogun, pretty cool show, a lot of mind tricks, mind games, looks good, cool story happening, some unexpected things that might, you know, ting, ting, tingle your brain a bit. Might tingle your brain, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just realized, no GoPro today, so we're just using this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, go watch it. Nine out of ten. Yeah, I, nine out of ten. Yeah. You know what? I initially went in going, I probably have a complaint, but I haven't actually thought of one. So I guess mm. out of obligation, I must go with a ten out of ten because I don't have anything to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So See, strong yeah. praises from us, like a strong nine, nine point three. You know, the sequel would be cool. Doesn't have to end ah, in a little vague want, thing, but I know I, I get, I get the vague. You can just you can look at history or whatever. Yeah, rerun it. Toronag is based on um, an actual guy. Mm. The first Shogun of Japan, I believe. So, like, theoretically, he would gain the Shogun title. Yeah, if you go by history. He's a fictionalized version, yeah. though, so, like... Yeah. Be the top dog. All right. I realized the reason I was like, I was like, I like Jap more. There's not really anything that they're talking about a historical Chinese thing. Because you just have to make okay. drama. There's there's nothing... Yeah. The, the Japanese culture, especially back then, with all of the code of honor and... Okay, go kill yourself All now. of the uh, hierarchy and all that. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, the also, Chinese stuff is very, just like, more, more. Not as... Also, well, if you actually want to look at... Also, like, because you, you always talk about, like, big budget Hollywood type adaptations or whatever, right? Yeah, because the cheap Chinese adaptations... Yeah, you know. but yeah, if you actually think about the world of, like, the... Like Japan and the US, they're pretty chill. I know. And Japan and uh, not Japan oh, and China, yeah. US. Well, Japan and China, and China still, yeah. But yeah. US and China, not as chill, you know. Because Japan sounds like a cool country. That's the whole. I did a whole research project about that. How they yeah. they branded themselves as being like cool, and like look at look at us. Look forget at about Japan. everything that happened in World War Two. That was that's the whole yeah. deal. It's like forget about all the atrocities we've done. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Japan, Japan has been, has been the, I mean, since the twentieth century, has been the go-to 
Eastern country in the Western world if when you're like, oh, yeah. the East, the East, oh, Japan in it. But now Korea potentially now Korea, is now the, 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 yeah. new, the new kid on the block. New kid on the block. So they're like, oh my god, Oppa, yeah. Sarangio. There is that. There was going to be that one Assassin's Creed China game, but guess what? It's going to be a mobile game. Dang, um, and then Chinese community. Yeah. No. And then it's like mysteriously disappeared, even though the beta was like last year. I don't know. The most interesting uh, thing I have seen from China when it comes to making a historical Chinese film was exploring this one like major port city that for some reason no one has show talked about. Hong Kong. No, because um they had this was a city that had a, a huge um African slave community. Mm, okay. But in history, these slaves made um they pretty much became an underground mafia, mm. and Idris Elba went to. So went to China to play the, the, the king of these people. Oh, I thought you meant historically. Idris Elba was yeah, back. Was back in time. Yeah. No, no. So Idris Elba went to China. So to... they made that show? He was in the show in China. It's not an American show. It's a Chinese show. Oh, they speak uh... Chinese. Yes, I think. Yo. Does it Idris Elba I think it was lip sync. Probably. Oh, we should watch it this. Yeah. I want to see that. Oh, fun fact, speaking of lip sync, you know they used to lip sync Australian movies to do it, like, they used to do the also, American Also, I might be dubs. getting my black man mixed oh. up. I might be whoa, getting, I might, whoa, I might, whoa, we can't man. say that, I bro. say it's just Elba, that's the first man that came it to my Will mind. It was Smith. That's Knuckles, bro. Ah, oh, shit. Is, 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 is Idris Elba Knuckles? Yeah. Yeah. He was um, A good historical Chinese movie I've seen is, uh, what was it called, like, Hero or something? The martial arts movie? I've seen Ip Man. Well, it's got Donnie Yen in it. Actually, Dang. yeah, is Ip Man historically accurate? Never watched. Is it that just modern day, or like no, close like to modern day? The the forties or something. Is it? Ah, uh, yeah, but it's it's not like a historical thing. Is it just like fucking? But he can't. I'm gonna fight people. Yeah, yeah. No, I've never watched it. John Wick or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, he fights a bunch of guys. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. that we might. I want. I want to see that slave movie. Yeah. They're, oh, they're Kendrick, minor characters. Kendrick did address something from the Drake this. He was like, "Yeah, you saying we slaves?" And then he's like, <laughs> and then he's like, "Yeah, history, yada yada. You're a colonizer." Yeah, he did. He did say that. Yeah, but it's doubling down on the "you're too white" rare sort of vibe as well. Yeah, but because before that, Drake was like, "Oh, you, you talk about slaves a lot." Yeah, but he didn't address the the beatings though. Yeah. So, haha. All right. Um, let's move on to Ripley. Ripley. All right. Ripley, Ripley, Ripley. This is another adaptation of, I believe, the novel is Talented Mr. Ripley. Mm. Um, there was a film in the early, maybe late 90s, early 2000s with Matt Damon, and it was partly inspiration for The Room, fun fact. Tommy Wiseau saw that. Yeah. He was like, and he hey. loved it. Because that's why there's a three character dynamic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the new Netflix series adaptation starring Andrew Scott as the titular Ripley. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Did you like it? Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool, but you know, at, at some times I'm kind of I'm feeling like, man, this Ripley guy, he kind of kind of stumbling you know but you know i guess I he's guess failing he, upwards very yeah he's kind of failing upwards here yeah but you know it keeps me on my toes on the on the edge of my seat i'm like what's this man gonna do next it's not as smooth as my main man joe yeah but i thought Definitely. cool thing happening here yeah yeah because I, I think they're they kind of set that up at the start as well because hmm. when he's doing his typical con manship in new york he's yeah. also not the, the best at it thing. yeah yeah which i feel like well i mean that, that kind of it's the point the show is him just failing upwards basically mm, yeah. and just like getting out of situations because other people are stupid or other people trip up on shit yes kind of yeah if worse is the worst just kill him <laughs> it's the, the joe mantra yeah instead of vibe and then balance i'm delicate, delicate. well no cool um, I think the presentation was really good. Black and white, Italian. Yeah, that as a layer. Yeah. Um, oh, I like the cinematography the was real nice as well. Mm. Locations were cool. 
they be saying prego. Yeah. And, uh, bring bring you back. Took you back. Yeah. Per favore. Lot of stairs. And then Ripley be saying grazie a lot. Yeah. Because he's American. American man. Yeah, even when he learned a bit of more Italian, he still goes grazie. Funny man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like this show, actually. Um, it's, yeah, really cool with the nice visuals and stuff. Um, I do have a problem with the show that's kind of like, I feel like it was the second, the end-ish of the second half. It kind of feels like we're doing the same thing a little bit. Like, it's yeah. been a, it kind of slows down and... So basically, in a nutshell, without spoiling too much, Ripley is a con man who ends up getting this kind of gig in Italy um, mm -hmm. with this one guy, uh, Richard Greenleaf, who I believe his name was, um, mm -hmm. and his partner, and he stays with them. And um, basically, things escalate, and Tom, stuff happens. <laughs> Tom decided to you know, take things to his own hands. Yeah. He takes things a bit too far, maybe. And then, kind of, the second half of the show is, like, the repercussions of that. And, like, how is he going to get out of this situation? Yeah. How is he going to get He's out of this one? Now. And I feel like... In, every time, like, a character will, would, like, they do stuff with the police, right? And I feel like every time they get close, they kind of fumble it somehow. Mm -hmm. And it came to the point where I was going to get, like... How is nobody figuring anything out? And it's getting a little bit like, especially the partner. She kept yeah. doing, like, kept visiting, and like she going through the same mm -hmm. sort of dialogue of and going she, like, I guess "Hey, where's this guy?" Blah, blah, blah. She's like, "I guess you're right." Yeah, and it felt a bit like, okay, this is stuff that, like, I understand making a TV show rather than a movie. Mm -hmm. Um, it does flesh out a lot more stuff and all of that, but it does kind of get. Like, this stuff could have genuinely not even been shortened, but, like, I feel like maybe a whole episode could have been cut low-key. Mm. Which is... Yeah. 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 No, the, the funny thing is when the cop came back. Yeah. And it's the same guy. Yeah. And he's like, oh. No, he put on a wig, bro. Yeah, was <laughs> that was that part I was so confused, yeah. but then I realized, oh, he's literally just following for a fucking wig. Yeah, he's wig a beard. Which, cool. like, I don't know if the show's, like, it's, I don't think the show's that serious well, about so it, like right? They, they, Ripley adjusted the lighting so it's dark. Yeah. Shit, so it's like, I guess. Yeah. That's some logic to it, but it's, it's the same face. Yeah. It's in black and white, you can't see that well. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I mean, I think the show, like, it's a little bit sometimes, like, making fun of itself kind of like mm. it's it's not taking it too seriously because like elements like that i feel like a purposely more funny there's yeah. um there's kind of also this one running joke i guess with the nightgown and how everyone yeah. will be like this is fucking ugly every time they see it but, but also we can't likes. see it because it's in black mm -hmm. and white and yeah so like that's kind of funny um, it does a cool thing towards the end where it gets a little bit um, mythological, I guess, with it um, bringing in some, like, historical stuff and making some comparisons. Oh, yeah, the There's also the thing with um, the, I think, comparisons with, like, Narcissus or whatever the fucking Greek or that tale was involved because that, that was the title for the episode I forgot and there was the, the show reflections show. in the water and stuff mm. like that yeah did, did they yeah, yeah they explained the story of that that's uh, where this word from oh so, i already know it but yeah. i can't remember if they did it in the show but like oh, no. there was that parallel there yeah so it's like they expected yeah. to know it yeah. really yeah i mean you don't have to either way but like it's a cool like thing because, like, yeah, the location of Venice works well for that. Because yes. lots of looking in the water and stuff. Water. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my only, I guess, yeah, just my only real problem is it does get quite repetitive towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, to the point where it's, like, I guess, like, one of the big things of it's, like, how is he going to get out of this? 
And then towards the end, it's like he's doing so little, but it's just working for him. Then it's kind of like, it's not really how does he get out of this? It's like, well, okay, how's it going to end? Is anyone mm. going to eventually find out or whatever? And we'll get to that in spoilers, I guess. Um, but yeah. Um, compliments, though. I feel like I haven't gotten to enough compliments. Um, I think the acting is really solid. Andrew yeah. Scott is just so good at everything. Um, you know, you know Andrew Scott from uh, bloody he's Moriarty and Sherlock, mate. Oh yeah, he yeah. Oh yeah, you watched Sherlock too. That, that's, oh yeah, yeah. I don't remember much, but yeah. Yeah, what a good show that show was, Sherlock, mate. Sherlock, Sherlock. you know, Watson, Watson should have been there. He would have. Yeah, out popped the man, popped, popped the man, spot, yeah. man. Um. Yeah. Um. I think that, like, the writing, I feel like, is generally pretty good. Like, dialogue and stuff. And, like, the way the story... Once again, too long, but, like, I still dig the story mm. of this, like... It's kind of like... it's Because in regards to, like, the Joe... Th well, actually, no, Joe also kind of fucks up a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. But I guess, like... But he's more slick with it. Yeah, because, like, in terms of, like, him being the talented Mr. Ripley sort of thing, I feel like it's kind of ironic, because he fucks up so much in this show, I feel, that it's, like, the show kind of makes fun of him a little, you know? Yeah. And I kind of dig that. True, true, they yeah. say. And it is, like, cool to see the fact that he kind of has to play two characters in a way. Not really, mm -hmm. but, like, two other people, it seems like he's two characters or whatever. Um, like the the, the dead man and yeah and he has to try and keep up with lies and like the stories and mm -hmm. like maybe he'll fumble a little sometimes and, like yeah that's real crazy shit man and i think the ending of the show is quite funny where oh i always spoil it but it, he does a bit of a prank mm -hmm. so a bit of a prank element to the end like uh, towards all the cuffs ah uh, yeah you want to talk spoilers yeah 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 cool. So yeah, what is what does he do? What is what naughty man? What does he do? Give him a book. Oh, I bet at the start, like he, he kills Richard, bro. Right? He did kill. Richard. He did kill Dicky, mate. Right? Oh, he... yeah, that was an example of one of the scenes where he's like so stupid, bro. Right? He kills him and then immediately f fumbles it all up and gets knocked out for like a brief moment mm -hmm. yeah. when he falls in the water and all Bash that. Similarly, when he kills another guy later on. He struggles so much with getting rid of the body. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like comedic. Uh, bits like that, though, I feel like went on for way too long. It's like, yeah. 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 That's elements that are like, yeah, could have been cut down to a movie. Like, maybe. I don't know. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this kind of, it kind of, the show pokes fun at how Ripley kind of thinks he's <laughs> he the, he the more power. talented than he is. Yeah, because, like, you know, Joe knows how to dispose of a body. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Really, Ripley, he has to think about it. Yeah. Going to a different part of it, and I said before, on like, how we talk about the flashback. Yeah. And that reminded me of Shogun, and how they had a flashback to the future when he's an old man. Oh, yeah, yeah, What was that about? Uh, I think maybe it's the idea that he... Maybe recounts the story or something. Tells his kid something. I don't know. Yeah, but he was like an old man having a seizure in his bed or something. Yeah. So this should come. I was thinking like, okay, that's maybe sequel something. Like... No, nah, because he's dying, bro. Yeah, he's dead. Like, there ain't no way like, he's That means he made it back, right, to England somehow. Mate, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe. it could be his kids in Japan. Who knows? But they're taught in British in the Indies. Yeah, but he'd probably Tottenham. teach them English, right? Nah. Nah, he'd teach them Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> that's real. All All right. Right. Back to reality. Right. Back to reality, that's real. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Ripley, Ripley. He'd be kind of funky, though. He do be kind of funky. Walking around. So what's his deal? What's his deal? He hates his aunt. Aunt. Yeah. So is, is that his motivation for everything? 
Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm guessing he's the type of guy, you know, he's been living like that for a lot of his life. So, you know, he's got to, that's all he do. Do some fraud. You see an opportunity, you got to seize it. You got to capture it or you let it slip. That's true. I'll say he, t- he murdered his aunt, right? There's like a brief moment in one of the later no. episodes where you get one flash, like one sh- quick shot of the aunt screaming. Maybe. Mm. But like, in the early episode... <laughs> He still sent a mail to the aunt. Yeah. So I'm like, did he kill her before he let... I don't know. Yeah. Well, because maybe he sent the letter to, as a way of being like, I sent the letter so I was leaving. I wasn't going to visit the aunt sort of vibe. Uh-huh. To be like, you know... You read the letter it says, commit the puku. Nah. Yeah, I don't know. And then they had the scene with the fucking dentist. Yeah. What was that about? Does she sell her teeth yeah. for money? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. That's like Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Fallout. I think it's a reference to it. Oh, oh, Fallout the reference. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So, like, did Tom actually know Richie? Or has he, he actually, actually met Richie beforehand? No. Like, no. they have crossed paths, but he doesn't know him. Yeah. Like, they met at that one party with the, the screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. But there were... R- Richie kept saying, like, I'm not sure if I actually did meet you there. Yeah, because it was probably just, like, they were at the same party. Like, they might not even have actually crossed paths. They didn't talk. No. Nah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And maybe, like, maybe it wasn't even Ripley. Maybe he was impersonating someone else. I don't know. Like, yeah. Maybe Ripley's not even Ripley. Maybe he used to be That's someone not else his before. Original name, yes. Yeah. Keep switching names. Keep switching names. Yeah. Gotta keep it fresh. Um. Can't remember the thing I was talking about. What do you say? He be moving around. He be going. He be like, yo, Freddy, he a bitch. I mean, I guess the interesting thing in the way. Freddy. In terms of his motivation, like, I'm not sure if it's, it's, I think he enjoys, like, kind of being... Someone he's not. That, and also, like, almost getting caught, but not really, because, like, there's some opportunities where he could just straight up leave, but he will go yeah. and, like, for example, like, just rent a house and mm-hmm. just stay there. And just be like, this is where I am, and just keep up the lie or whatever. Until, yeah. I guess, by the end of the show... He kind of doesn't really have too much of a choice but to leave. Yeah. And he's going to do the same thing in England, maybe? He'd be, uh... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not about avoiding the situation. It's about... Yeah. It's about how, how far can I go with this? Yeah. Type guy. That cray cray. Yeah. It's um, about edging, you know? That's the real, that's the real. Gotta respect it. I'm still thinking about the one Imagine. scene where he wears a wig. Mm. Yes, <laughs> that was pretty funny, funny though, yeah. yeah. There's the point, I'm like, come on. That's him, Mr. Officer. I mean, this uh, show, like, takes itself seriously, but also not. But also at the same time, yeah. 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 It has, like, definitely a balance to that, I guess. Because they're, 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 they're straight up just, like... Mm. Uh, like when he's getting chased by the fucking boat and he's in the water, that's just slapstick comedy, bro. He's just getting fucking oh, yeah. knocked around, bro. But you know, he almost died there. That's, that's true. Some serious stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the show. I don't. I assume the show is kind of from the angle of like you know you're not meant mm-hmm. to like Ripley. Yeah. And I feel like the show doesn't like Ripley either. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I liked how at the end the police officer goes to the book and on the first page it's just like this is Richard Greenleaf and it's just not it's Ripley. I mean it's not yeah yeah it's not Ripley. And he's like oh shit. Nah. Yeah, that I guess that's one prank. thing uh, he was successful at is bamboozling most people because he he didn't have the two people he didn't have Marge and some other guy at the same place at the same yeah. time. Be like hey, that's not Richie. But you could also argue it was also their own kind of stupidity at mm-hmm. times. Well, rather than me, his pure talent or whatever, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, are you looking forward to season two? In if they do a season two? Like, there, there's a series, the book series. Mm, yeah. So like, yeah. 
Gosh, I'm just like, I, I don't know the book series. I'm just like wondering where would they go with me? Is it just going to do the Joe thing? He's going to move England. to a, your yeah. England. He'll meet Joe. Oh, and um, they'll become the friends. Past. Cross over. Yeah. Boy. He should go to another European country so he has to learn to speak again. Yeah, real. Mi chiamo. Mi chiamo. He Mi says it in England. Mi chiamo. Hey, ciao, ragazzi. Oh, his new Mi name's chiamo. funny as well. It's like... Uh, yeah, it? Something British. James. It's like Thomas... Wanker. Wanker. Thomas... <laughs> Wackham... Whack-a-mole. whack em the third. <laughs> what? That's cool. Alright. Ripley. Ripley. Verdicto. Verdict. Ripley be kind of funny. And he black and white though. <laughs> like Drake. Like Drake. Like Drizzy. He keep it chill. Like the bodies under the water. So I'm gonna give it a... 7.5 Good time Maybe Almost fall Considering me I did fall asleep I, yeah. That's wearing how I slept our, last night bro. Wearing our colours Yeah Black and white Black and white You know it's better than a 7 No girl Gorilla was 7.5 Yeah Um I think I liked it a tiny bit more But um Genuinely like The sub The fact that some episodes Could have been cut well, it's kind of a bit of a problem, mm. you know. So I'm like, but like the, ep- the episodes that banged, they banged. You know what I mean? Yeah. Banging, banging. So banging, I'm gonna banging. give this one an eight. So Ooh, like, nice. Combined Shit. average of like seven point six or something. But yeah, Very I nice. think both ah. pretty good shows. Ugh. Pretty good ones this For this TV week at the Unholy Trinity. TV week and the but garbage truck just mm-hmm. came. Yippee, now it's time to check if Kendrick dropped. Don't even check oh, if Kendrick dropped. Damn. I, I flash back to year seven when I everyone laughed at me for pronouncing no. Kendrick Lamar. Yo, yeah, he actually uses a, that like it is. Yeah, that could be a bar. Kendrick um, Lamar. Yes, I think, Kendrick yeah. Lamar. No response yet. We're not going back to back. Like, I don't know how to pronounce it, guys. Stop laughing at me. Yeah, no, he hasn't dropped yet. That's All crazy. Right. All right, let's uh, outro this shit. Let's do it. Go ahead. We're done. I, uh, if you haven't done it already, follow us on the Spotify Ooh. podcast, Instagram, unholy.pod, TikTok, unholy.pod. They're kind of like meh onion rings, your onion rings. <laughs> you got a uh, email, three unholy things at gmail.com for any inquiries, business opportunities or just uh, you know if you were lonely Lonely. tell us uh, what we should should watch next watch what we should watch next bang 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 and what you thought about this episode in the comments or in the Q&A section I think uh, we'll be seeing you next one man bye bye oh uh, Uh, next week sorry we'll be covering uh, what's the monkey movie kingdom of the planet of the apes planet of the apes (laughs) The monkey movie. And I reckon we'll throw in... Okay, I'll give you guys the option. Do you want to watch something that might be good or something bad? Mm, what's the chance that the monkey movie is going to be bad? No, no. Other than the monkey movie, except for our second No, but what's the chance that that's going to be bad so we can balance it out with a good one? I think it'll be good. Okay, then let's watch a bad one. Alright, then we'll also watch Taro, the new horror movie. Yeah. Alright. We'll see if this movie is scary or more... More movies to add to the ass movie list of the year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Check us. Check us out check, for check, that. Check and see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.